got your supper, Selden. Selden, are you bloody deaf? What do you make of it, Watson? Directed here last night, along with the request to meet. What appears to be an ordinary gentleman's walking stick. Yes, but what can you tell me about the gentleman from the stick? Well, the man's a doctor, judging by the MD on the handle. Dr. James Mortimer. Must have had a pretty successful hospital career to receive a gift like this. Well done, Watson. Your time in aiding me on my various cases has finally paid off. You develop considerable deductive powers of your own. However, it has also given you an air of confidence that is completely unwarranted. Those who do not possess genius often have an odd way of stimulating it. There is nothing more repulsive than a stagnant mind, so for that, I thank you. Your deductions, however, were flawed on several points. For instance, although it is true that Dr. Mortimer may have once had a career in the hospital, it is unlikely that he holds his practice there now. The dried mud on the tip of his cane suggests a country practice, and it appears that he does a great deal of visiting on foot. Therefore, I can deduce that he is a young man, early thirties, and is in the possession of a dog. A dog? A dog who enjoys teething. Notice the bite marks on the end of the cane. You see who's right in that moment. Quick, here he comes! Oh, thank you, sir. I couldn't remember I left it here down at the station. Oh, not at all. I think, Dr. Mortimer, that you would do wisely to please skip the gratitude and tell me plainly the nature of the problem it is you came to consult me on. Oh, yes, of course. I, uh, have here a manuscript <clears throat> by my late friend, uh, Sir Charles, detailing a bit of problem, if you would. In the year 1792, Sir Hugo Baskerville of Devonshire, Dartmoor, fell in love with a young servant girl in his employ. However, the girl rejected him, putting him in a fit of rage. He locked her away and had his hound guard her cell. One night, the girl escaped. Sir Hugo and five other men gave chase to recapture the youth. They found her dead of fatigue upon the moor, with the hound standing over her. The creature had become attached to his prisoner, so when Sir Hugo approached the body, the hound lunged at him to defend his mistress, clawing out his throat and those of the men who had come with him. The hound then made its way across the moor, disappearing into the fog. And so, my sons, here is the tale of the Hound of the Baskervilles, and how it came to plague this family. To this province, my sons, take heed. Beware the moor in the hours of darkness, when the forces of evil are exalted. Well, do you find it interesting? To a collector of fiction, I was under the impression that you were here to talk to me about the death of Sir Charles, not some irrelevant old wives' tale. Mr. Holmes, I beg your pardon, but the two are related. Upon discovering the body, I found a pair of footprints leading up to it. Footprints? A man or a woman's? Sir, they were the footprints of a gigantic hound. You saw this? As clear as I see you now. There have been several sightings of the creature on the moor. I took it upon myself to meet with some of the witnesses. Honest farmers, all of them, and native to the area. If only you had called me in sooner! 
it's evident that this case holds at least some interest for someone with a scientific mind to disprove the works of the supernatural. I could not, not without disclosing these facts to the world. Besides, there is a realm in which even the most astute and experienced of detectives is utterly helpless. Then perhaps you'd be better off consulting your local priest. After all, taking on the master of evil himself might be a little too ambitious, even for someone with my no inconsiderable experiences. The work of the supernatural is not what I've come to consult you on, Holmes. Then pray tell, what is it that you have come to consult me on? The matter of a Sir Henry Baskerville, who arrives at Waterloo Station in exactly an hour and a quarter. He being the heir. With Sir Charles' brother dead in Costa Rica, his nephew is now the next of kin. Then I recommend, sir, that you take a cab and proceed to Waterloo Station to meet with Sir Henry. Watson and I shall meet you tomorrow at Hanson's to discuss this matter further. If you value your life or reason, keep away from the moor. Let us cut from the Times. Yes, it's right from that post this morning. Has anything odd happened to you since your arrival in London, Sir Henry? Have you been followed? Not that I know of. Then who knew where you were staying? No one besides myself and Dr. Mortimer. Yes, what are you getting at, Holmes? This envelope was addressed to the Northumberland Hotel. Believe me, Sir Henry, you are being followed. Sounds like you've stepped into a dime novel. Well, it seems somebody is trying to warn you of the dangers on the moor. Or scare me away. I don't think so. Whoever wrote this letter did so in haste. Notice the uneven gluing of the words and the scribbling of the word more. This letter was also crumbled, suggesting that someone kept it in their pocket until such time that it could be posted. This indicates that someone took upon themselves a great personal risk to get this letter to you. It is my conclusion, then, that this is a friendly warning. But who sent it? Who indeed? Coming, Holmes. Such a lovely day, Watson. I think I'll walk. Suit yourself? I can only swear to a beard. The practical thing which we now have to decide is whether or not you should go to Baskerville Hall, now that it's evident there is danger about. There's no man on earth nor devil in hell that will keep me from going to the place of my ancestors. Well, we still can't send you there alone. Dr. Morton will return with me. Yes, but he has his practice and lives a ways off. Well, what about you, Mr. Holmes? Alas, I cannot blackmail case. A very respectable gentleman will fall to ruin if I can't get to the bottom of it. Still, we can't send you in alone. Walton would be happy to join you. Thank you, sir. You put my mind at ease. You're, you're welcome. Good day, sir. Good day. Good day. Good day, sir. Oh, and Sir Henry, as a matter of interest, how much did your uncle leave you? It, it came to be 
almost half a million pounds. I see. Good day to you then. Holmes, why did you... Watson, it would be much appreciated if you left for the remainder of the day and returned to Baker Street later tonight. I've mapped out Dartmoor, the Stapletons in Merripit House, or Laura Lyons at Combe Tracy, the Mortimers at their house, and the Baskerville household up at the hall. And these marks? The sightings of the hound thus far. It is a worthy setting, Watson, should the devil decide to have a hand in the affairs of men. So you yourself have gone over to the side of the supernaturalists? Me, Watson, never. Nevertheless, it's a dangerous business. I should be glad to have you safe and sound in Baker Street once more. Well, thank you, Holmes. Carry your revolver night and day. Don't let Sir Henry go out anywhere by himself. And above all, avoid the moor. Whereas the parchment so quickly puts it. The forces of evil are exalted. There it is, Baskerville Hall. Thank you. You must be Miss Barrymore. Dr. Mortimer speaks very highly of you and assurances to our family. I was sorry to hear about the death of your husband last winter. Well, thank you very much. And if there's anything you may need, please do not hesitate to ask. Well, a bit of supper does sound good. Then I'll have it ready in half an hour. Thank you. <laughs> 